Hello everyone, welcome back to 3DX. So it's that time of year where we go camping. Wait, what? It's not? Alrighty then, anyway, let's go ahead and create a camping scene with Maya, ZBrush and Substance Painter. Alrighty, so first things first obviously is to uh, gather some reference images. So I just did a Google search for, uh, I think I did a search for camp or something like that. So you can find these online or just continue to look or you can just look for your own pictures as well. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be using these for reference and not exactly copy what's in the references, but just kind of base my model somewhat on the references. So it's always good to get references, but change uh, some things about them, especially if you're making something that's uh, stylized. Now, if you are making realistic models, then Obviously, you do want to uh, base it off uh, something that's real and make it look realistic, of course. So what I'm going to do here is mostly create the shapes through um, just by using some extrusions on simple planes. So like you can see here for the tent itself, I'm just creating the shapes from simple extrusions. And then giving those shapes thickness by extruding the models um, and making them look thick. And for the tent itself, uh, the back, I'm going to keep it a separate. And the main shape is going to be one piece. Uh, typically, it's uh, it's a lot easier to work with creating a model uh, if you make it in pieces. I just find that usually it's always a lot easier to make something if you just break it up into pieces. Whereas if you try to model something uh, from one piece, it just becomes more difficult and it takes a little bit more time as well and when you make something in pieces you can always uh, do some welding and bring everything back into one piece if you have to so as part of this scene i'm going to also be creating a few more pieces not just the tent so i'm going to create a few wood locks and uh, a fireplace as well and I also obviously got some pictures references for this as well. I'm going to keep the shapes a little bit exaggerated because like I said, this is going to be stylized. I think that's one of the things uh, when it comes to making stylized models is that you just want to exaggerate some, exaggerate some of the pieces. Let's go ahead and make an, a simple axe here. And obviously, like I mentioned earlier, uh, mostly by just using a few extrusion by doing a few extrusions and just adding a few edges as well. You'll notice that that's mostly, those are mostly the tools that I use. Um, you know, Maya comes with a lot of tools, but you'll find that you're only going to be using a few ones uh, almost all the time. So I find myself using the extrude tool and the multi-cut tool just to add edge loops and the collapse tool to get rid of some edge loops as well. Those are probably the main tools that I typically use so you know Maya comes with a lot of tools but like I said you don't have to use them all and there isn't always a, a use case for those tools so for the bed itself I obviously like you saw I used the uh, sub D mode when I was making the low poly and then I divided it once and got rid of some of the unnecessary geo just to keep it somewhat low poly And this scene right here is obviously you not know, relatively low poly. There's nothing, it's nothing too dense uh, when it comes to the uh, poly count of this. So this one would be ideal just to view from a like a third person view in a in a game, of course. For a first person view, I would probably go a little bit more dense with some of the geo. Um, and just add a few more details to the geo as well. All right, for so UVs, I'm mostly using uh, the technique that I use mostly most of the time, uh, which is I cut UVs where there's a close, but there's a near 90 degree angle change in the topology of the model. And a good idea too is to cut UVs wherever uh, they're not too noticeable. Obviously some spots, I mean, you just have to cut them because that's the only place you can do that. 
So for this lamp here, I'm going to uh, have it be symmetrical. Uh, the bed itself, I'm also going to be, I'm also going to keep it symmetrical so that uh, I save some UV space. So in this case, I'm going to apply more than one material to the model. Uh, the reason for that is because, uh, you know, this is a few elements, uh, there's a few props, uh, there's the tent. The tent itself could use just one material, then I could uh, group the props into their own materials, and maybe the bed. Um, so that's kind of what I did in this case. I was going to use uh, UDIMs for this, uh, but then later I realized that you can't really use UDIMs in Substance Painter uh, if you have overlapping UVs, which I do in this case, because some of the pieces are symmetrical. So that's why you will see here that I'm packing it in a way that uh, you would set up UDIMs in Substance Painter. Uh, but like I mentioned, that did not work because I don't think it works with uh, overlapping UVs. If I'm wrong with, uh, if I'm wrong there, someone please correct me. Let me know what the process is to get UDIMs to work uh, with overlapping UVs. Uh, but in this case, I, as far as I know, as far as I found out while making this, realized that you can't really use UDIMs with uh, overlapping UVs. Might be wrong, uh, but so in this in that case, what I ended up doing was I applied a material to each model. So I wasn't using UDIMs in Painter. Instead, I was just uh, doing the regular application of materials in Painter to separate them. So here in ZBrush, I'm just going to add a few details. I'm not going to go too overboard with it. Um, just going to add some creases here to the actual tent. And I'm using the Orb uh, Brush Pack. And in this case, I'm using the Orb Curve Brush. You can find the Orb Brushes just by doing a Google search. So I'm going to add a few details on the tent itself. Not going to go too overboard with it. And I want to keep the details simplified as well. And export this uh, to Substance Painter as my high poly. And then in Maya, I ended up applying a different material to uh, the different uh, sections of the model. Like I mentioned, I was not able to use UDIMs in this case, so I ended up doing it this way, where I just applied uh, different materials to the different pieces. This way I still ended up with three different uh, textures for each. So in Substance Painter, I'm going to be baking each uh, separately. So I loaded up the model and I loaded my high poly and low poly. I'm baking by name mesh as well. And I baked all the textures. So the difference between using UDIMs and this uh, way is that, you know, you get to apply, you have to apply the material separately to each section, essentially. And in this case, I'm using the uh, 3DX stylized uh, material. If you're interested in that, there's a link in the video description uh, on how to make it. And I typically use that material as my base, and then I add more, uh, I create more layers on top and add more details. And as I always mention, I highly recommend you guys spend way more time than I do with these videos when it comes to, you know, adding details to your models and uh, polishing details, making sure that everything looks good. Sometimes I, I do go a little bit rough with these models uh, for the videos, but I highly recommend you guys spend way more time than I do. Alrighty, so here's the render in Marvel's Head Toolbag. So I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, uh, do me a favor and hit the like button. Hopefully, I'll see you in a future video. Alrighty, later. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. 
you too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.